Hey everyone, I'm Ashwara Mahapatra and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. Today we are going to talk to an amazing person. He interned with me at Goldman Sachs. He got a PPO and re-interned there for six months. And then he got an offer from Google India. He's a five-star coder at CodeChef and an expert at Code Forces. Today we'll be discussing a lot of things with him, a lot of our doubts. Is CP really required to crack these companies? How to get a PPO? And what are the best strategies to use to crack good companies? So without any further ado, let's get started. So hey, Yashraj, a uh, very warm welcome to my channel. So how are you doing? Hey, Ashwarya. Um, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm good. Uh, I'm, so it's been a few months since I started my new job. So it's it's mostly my days mostly are about learning things, talking to people, figuring stuff out, <clears throat> asking for help, a lot of help. Yeah. actually and uh, yeah basically trying to explore the new city as well all right so first of all again once again a very huge congratulations on cracking companies like Goldman Sachs and Google so like one thing I was just going through your profile and one thing that really grabbed my attention was your projects I mean the projects that you've worked upon is really amazing I mean they are kind of little unique you cannot easily find those on the web anywhere so, like, how these projects actually help you in gaining skills and grabbing good opportunities? So, um, when we started off um, making projects, um, the, the intent wasn't like, we did not really have a clear intent apart from um, trying, to, trying to get maximum learning value yeah. out of the projects. But uh, later on, we kind of realized, so we here refers to me and my friends because I think pretty much every project I did which exists on my resume was created with someone or someone else. So, yeah. um, but the kind of value we derived from the projects actually showed up when we had a chance to get a resume in front of someone. Yeah. So, for instance, um, in semester seven, we had uh, created a project where we had implemented the raft consensus protocol. And that actually is an assignment given to folks at MIT. Okay. So we just like uh, went to that, their course and yeah. we saw that these guys are building this. So it was like uh, one MIT student builds that. Like it was four mm -hmm. of us who were trying to do the same thing. Basically, the project was very nicely structured for us. So we just had to like focus on learning and like getting the test cases right. Um, so whenever like me and my friends talked about that project, because like mostly we were applying for back in engineering roles, it actually gave us a lot of bonus points. Like right. people were actually interested in knowing about what we were working on. Projects actually work in my opinion because a lot of people don't really put time mm -hmm. to, to making good projects. Right, right. Uh, mostly mostly projects are fairly standard. So so if you have something different, you naturally stand out. Apart from that, of course, there are a lot of other advantages. For example, um, since we were used to working together, we were very comfortable with version control. We were very comfortable with reading right. each other's code. With like, we were very comfortable with like, in general, the software development type cycle. Yeah, because like what I have seen these days that uh, students generally do projects for the sake of doing it because they have to mention it in the resume. They don't really learn from it. They just you know, uh, I get a lot of questions like, what kind of project should I do? How much big that project should be? You know, there are a lot, lot of these kind of questions. But one thing that we should generally focus upon is what are you actually learning from doing that? Be it the language, be it, you know, because I guess in your case, you kind of, you people kind of set an environment of working for a firm, actually. You kind of worked on a real project. It was something that is not available online. You're uh, researching yourself that's what we do in a firm uh, while, while we are working so I guess yeah that and I, I personally feel that would have been a very big edge for you when the interviewer would have gone through your resume you know that I mean you don't see that generally mm -hmm. on everyone anyone's resume so that's really great that you people got that guts to go for doing these big projects so um, my next question would be that even if you were so much involved in doing these projects, I realized that um, you somehow found your way through CP2. You managed your time uh, for CP. You are, uh, I guess, like a five-star coder on CodeChef, expert on code courses. Now, it's a very common question these days that is CP really required 
for com- cracking these companies or lead code is enough for it the reason why i did cp was not like like i did not have enough exposure to the fact that like even lead code is a good platform or anything like i just started off cp because my seniors did it and my key motivation was that i found that my programming assignments are just like way too easier as compared to what i'm doing here mm. and this seems like a good way to uh, brush up on my at least my implementation skills and fundamentals and that's how i started off and i i frankly um, i'm i'm not really a cp advocate nor nor a critic to be honest like so my my journey was like i i did cp for like i don't know four semesters okay um so in my fourth semester just when covid started hmm. uh, i got export rated five stars both in the same month okay. just like one week apart i was like i'm done mera ho gaya and <laughs> this is all i wanted from cp because uh, the the curve about that that is much more difficult and and i was frankly um, a bit disappointed with myself that i don't really have Uh, enough dev experience which a lot of my friends had mm. so that is where i pivoted uh, but, uh, but but what i realized was um, i think it does help to be very honest if you do cp you have an edge for for big tech interviews uh, is it required probably not um, i have friends here who are who don't have cp experience or who have no nominal cp experience which you cannot really say that it's like cp experience um, i i had to give an online assessment for gs yeah it was difficult it was like you would know that because we i think went on the same batch i think november right. 2020 of campus batch right right right, right. so uh, so i think that was difficult and uh, mm-hmm. the question was on some advanced graph topic right which, right i also got that <laughs> which you would not uh, which you would not know if you have probably like you might have done hard questions on lead code which might mm-hmm. make you aware but but yeah the odds are that cp folks would be like better off yeah they would so, be yes with it yeah if off campus is your hope uh, probably cp helps to be very on yeah. um i think uh, yeah so it depends on how much time you have if you have sufficient time maybe investing a bit in cp might be good mm-hmm. but it helps you in multiple ways from attracting in- recruiters to yeah. cracking those online rounds to getting that self confidence in yourself a lot of things but in general i think uh, in general like uh, some good practice on lead code should be fine So yeah um next question i would ask is like what are some of the best practices while preparing for placements or internships that the students should take care of okay uh, i think we should answer this question in the context of off campus because that is where yeah. it is uh, my experience comes from bottom line like if you had to if you had to take like one one sentence answer from me it would be to uh, find people who are in the similar position as you and who who are really really motivated to get it done mm. and just like uh, stick with them and probably you will say uh, i say this because i have a per- like so let, let's take a very simple example where um, so so the the number of people doing cp in india is obviously very high mm. but the people at the top like people who would be like six stars on code chef or like um, masters and in international masters on code forces yeah. and above yeah um, th- that's a very small community Right. and what i saw was uh, a lot of them are like very good friends I, i know that because i have friends in those communities it's not like i am a part of them but i have seen their uh, how they are as communities and they really knew their way how to how to work um, like how to work and how to really get off campus offers right. and that really worked because it was like it's like creating your own mastermind circle where yeah. uh, they they actually had very insightful contextual advice on what really works for what company they 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 prepared together and they really found their weaknesses and everything they knew how to apply like i i know someone who landed four offers in three months okay. by cold calling like he was extremely extremely desperate to get a job because he was frustrated mm-hmm. after his internship experience he he cold called he he applied mm-hmm. he practiced competitive programming rigorously mm-hmm. uh, he he has he got four offers in three months and it is just one example i also have my own classmates who are like very well connected with equally motivated people who they they would find their way out to right. to really like hone themselves like i have seen them really like i have seen them getting a lot of interviews just by learning from people that mm-hmm. okay this is what is working for this company right so they the the transformation i saw in everyone in 6 7 months was right. was insane like a lot of people went from no jobs to having four five offers basically you will understand what matters how much yeah in what like 
for what kind of roles yeah uh, there is one website called binary search for example binarysearch.com is like a lead code alternative we're not talking about the website but because it's a new website the early users of the website built a community and i was fortunately a part of that and that actually helped me a lot for my interviews because i found very helpful people there who gave very good advice and i could really prepare for my interviews i had lost touch from dsa because i was very happy with my gspto mm. but uh, that group kind of like helped me get in shape very fast like i i would have not expected um, that much improvement in a short time if not for like context like very very context driven advice from that group. All right, yes, sir. So you basically interned with Goldman Sachs, and then you got the PPO two. Now I would like to give you some tips to my audience on how to get a PPO because I know that there are a lot of students who get an internship, but then they are really concerned and worried about whether they will get a PPO or not, whether they will get their offer converted or not. So, what are some of the tips uh, that you would like to give for me? I think converting internship. Uh... it is a very different grain than cracking interviews because it's like it's like an evaluation which goes for 6 to 10 weeks right. um typically like in general a company would uh, expect you to of course like like doing your assigned project in time would be a major expectation right. and the primary expectation uh, for which i think uh, it really it really helps to like be in proper communication with your manager Yeah. Uh, this is something we would not be used to because you have you probably have not worked in a corporate environment at all mm-hmm. but uh, like if you would take advice from people who have done the internships they'll probably tell you uh, it's very important to be in sync with your manager to be very open about um, what's expected from you how are you um, like uh, how are you progressing in those expectations right. and uh, and basically like very very proactively seeking and acting on feedback managers typically will not give you detailed feedback unless you ask for it asking for feedback is also a way for you to tell that you are really really proactively interested in what you are doing and you really want to come back like your managers should be able to see that um, you you are like genuinely interested in what you want to do right. and you you can be basically you should be manageable like you should not be uh, difficult situation for your manager or for your peers like you should really go well with the team yeah. um, you should have at least like decent bonds with everyone around you you should talk around you should you basically you should make your presence felt in a positive way like it should yeah. feel like you are adding value to the team be very proactive while working with these two people like understand your project expectations like complete the expectations on time if they are not completable on time it should not be discussed on the last week that because mm-hmm. of so and so reason i could not do it Yeah, you should have like because the time is very less. Um, in in GS case, it was just six weeks. So yeah. I I was very very proactively talking to my manager at least once every two days about what's going on. And right. I was really lucky to have an amazing manager. He was very very supportive. He was very kind. He gave a lot of his time. He, yeah. Even my buddy was amazing. Like yeah. they were they are like some of the best people I've met. That yeah. matters a lot. Like right right. But you cannot control that. But uh, be in sync with them. Take proper like. Uh, take a mid internship feedback. Take right. take some feedback just before the end of the internship. Uh, most companies will ask you to do a presentation yeah. to the whole company. Yeah. Where the senior leadership will also be there, and the senior leadership's vote will definitely count a lot mm-hmm. to to decide whether or not you should be brought back. Like yeah. prepare a proper presentation, prioritize that, uh, rehearse that, take feedback from your teammates to really understand what. Uh, because you will you might not have the right context of the whole situation because you just entered into the room you just started working right, so right. they will be able to like uh, give you the picture on why this work is important what is it that they are looking at basically those kind of things will help you so they would also want to see if, whether or not you are a culture fit mm-hmm. and in large companies it is clearly defined that this is what we mean when we say someone is a culture fit right so do take a look at that and uh, yeah i think getting the basic side is like pretty much like easier said than done of course All right, yes, Raj. So now let's discuss something about everyone has been waiting for. Uh, that's your Google interview experience. So let's start with how did you actually come across this uh, this opportunity? How did you get the opportunity to actually interview with Google? So um, I had got my GS PPO just like one week after my internship had ended. Yeah. And I was like pretty much done. Yeah. Because I was very happy with my team. But uh, what what really happened was um, I think around Jan I, I had applied. google already my profile was kind of 
shortlisted by some recruiter in Jan, and that's how I got in. And I just said yes. I had no preparation. Okay. Fifteen like months, no DSA, and uh, that's why I, I kind of like requested them to take things slow, which they agreed on. So first interview I could give uh, before my internship started, but after that it was like me mostly giving interviews in the morning, um, mostly Mondays or Tuesdays, then. doing the internship work then coming back at night and doing lead code that was my routine for one month okay and uh, i gave a lot of mocks a lot of mocks i prepared well for um for the nitty gritty details like simple things like i i went and understood what they expect from you like your recruiter mostly especially for google will share very good resources i took all of the advice very seriously i tried to like implement as much as i could and that's where mocks help to really apply that like a lot of my mocks were from googlers themselves talking to other googlers help and one thing which also helped was that i, I was not nervous at all it, except for my first interview because it was an interview after a very long time but uh, i was not nervous at all because i was very happy with my gs offer no, i was like if no, this no. does not work i am going back <laughs> so that also helped because i was like in the last interview for example i had a very unknown problem Okay. and i was like hey, this might falter but since i was like very calm and composed i was like what is the worst case yeah so basically like kind of like my profile in general which attracted the interview my connections which helped me get the mocks to um because i had done cp i could ramp up quickly to because i had project experience i could answer google ness questions well so kind of like things uh, because i had a gs internship i it, it helped yeah. me in general like, So, how long was this whole process uh, of your Google interviews? Um, because I was taking it slow, I think it was one month, around one month. I I did not give more than one interview a week. Okay. So, And how many uh, rounds were there in total? So, I think this year for new hires, it was like one phone screen and three on sites. Although everything is the same virtually, but this is the process. And I think that is a. You might have more rounds if they are you are on the borderline. Hmm. or you might have you might skip the phone screen is what i've heard if you came from kickstart so what kind of topics uh, do they focus more upon uh, during the interviews like people really want to know while preparing for google like which topics to prepare more is there anything specific they ask more questions like graphs mm -hmm. or binary research or something so it is the reason why graphs in dp is more prevalent is because it is easier to frame in innovative questions in graphs yeah. in dp yeah those might require extra attention but i have seen people getting questions of all types so so prepare for everything is what i would say of course like i'm not saying prepare for segment trees and square root decomposition but fundamentals of data structures and algorithms and what has been the difficulty levels of all these rounds yeah so they were not like extreme hard but yeah I, i'm not sure how to map it to lead code but probably medium hard would be my understanding that term. all right yes raj uh, i'll ask you a final question so what would be your suggestions for the students who are still struggling to get a placement or an internship if you are struggling then um, so most likely you would not have attracted uh, an interview altogether yeah most likely like if you if you have become capable enough to attract interviews you will most likely make your way to a job yeah so your goal probably should be to find out what is it that it is not working out first priority definitely would be to get speed in coding rounds yeah um but if if you don't have a job i think you should not leave any stone unturned is what i believe yeah. that um even if they ask you operating systems and cqs you should be able to answer something interview processes are very very arbitrarily variable across companies right is what i've seen being a generalist i think has uh, much better roi than being a specialist you should not just study to maybe clear interviews but to like um be a good engineer and i think there is like if you are a good enough engineer with good things to show some some or the other company will take you like like you would see people getting hired without dsa you would see people getting hired just with dsa mm -hmm. you would see people like basically things work out for people in different ways and there is there will be some company out there which will be willing to like give you a chance all right yashraj thanks a lot for uh, giving your time and coming on my channel it was amazing talk thank you so i hope you like this video and if you really like this video don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel i'll keep bringing these kind of videos for you till then we'll meet in the next video bye bye